six talks on the Compass of Zen by uh, our founding teacher, um, the Master Sun. Uh, we're extremely happy to <coughs> that he's uh, consented to do this. Uh, consented is actually the wrong word, it was his idea. He said, something, do it, necessary. So, uh, in this world being in the shape it's in, something, do it, is necessary. So, we're doing it. So, the format of these talks is that uh, each night a different student will give um, a uh, talk on uh, part of the Compass of Zen and the Master Sung San will answer questions. I think we need to keep that closed because it's just too noisy. Uh, Zen Master Sung San is the 78th patriarch uh, in the line going back to the Buddha, uh, was born in Korea, achieved enlightenment at the age of 22, and has been teaching in the West since 1972, and now has Zen uh, centers all over the world. Uh, next to him is Muriang Sanim, who has been a monk in our school for over 10 years, uh, graduated from Yale, uh, was uh, recently avid here, but uh, now has gone on to greener pastures, and he'll be giving the introductory talk. So, uh, thank you all very much for coming. Well, thank you, Ms. Anthony, <coughs> for that introduction. Uh, I have the uh, enviable task of giving the introduction, introductory talk uh, on the Compass of Zen teaching, which is actually the easiest. It's only uh, one or two pages long, but uh, I thought I would start off by saying that uh, in Oriental medicine, uh, uh, an oft-quoted uh, phrase is that you cure a hot sickness with a hot medicine and a cold sickness with a cold medicine. So uh, Sun Tzu has often said that uh, with, for word and speech medicine, which all human beings seem to have, you will cure that with words and speech. Words and speech sickness you cure with words and speech medicine. So many, many teachings have appeared. Uh, I, as Ms. Tzu said, I went to Yale University and I used to work in um, the Beinecke Rare Book Library, which was this uh, cube. Um, of a building with no windows and it's just marble sides and very dark inside, kind of very uh, mystical. And on the second floor, in a very, very prominent place, they had this lighted cabinet in the midst of this eerily dark room, a uh, huge hall with the Gu Gutenberg Bible in it. And for those of you who don't know, the Gutenberg Bible is the example of the, um, it's the first example of something printed with movable type in the West and they make a big deal out of it, um, owning that copy, and it's a, a very beautiful book, actually, very colorful and everything, um, but it's one book, and um, probably many of you have um, read the Bible, I know I have, um, you can basically sit down and read, read it in, um, read the New Testament in one afternoon um, or so, and uh, read the whole thing in a couple days, it's not a very imposing book. Um, but if you went uh, two floors down in the same Beinecke Rare Book Library, there was a whole collection of Tibetan Buddhist sutras. And those are um, sutras in Tibet. What they do, instead of making a book with bindings, they stack all these, pa these leaves of paper that have been printed with something, woodblock or something, on top of each other and kind of sandwich it with two boards, something like that, and they tie them together. Um, but the whole floor was covered with these things. I mean, it was a whole floor devoted to Tibetan Buddha Sutras. Um, so you have one book of the Bible, but this huge expanse of um, Tibetan Buddha Sutras, um, because um, Tibetan Sutras are the example of the, um, it's like the best example of all the Sanskrit Sutras in Buddhism, best preserved. And they were all freeze-dried and everything to prevent uh, insects from getting in them. Well, years after that, I um, was lucky enough to live in Korea for a while and made many uh, pilgrimages to a certain temple in Korea 
which is called Heinsa. It's the Dharma Treasure Temple in Korea. And they have uh, two huge buildings, not just floors, but buildings, um, probably almost as long as one city block each, um, filled with sutras. And the Korean version of the sutras are the best preserved collection of the whole Chinese Buddhist sutras. So this was two whole buildings full of sutras printed on wood or carved on wood blocks. So uh, if we're going to cure our word and speech sickness with word and speech medicine, we've got a lot of reading to do. Um, whether we choose the Tibetan uh, sutras or the Korean sutras, it's a lot of reading. And you just go downstairs and look in our library, any one book, it's a huge, like the Threefold Lotus Sutra or whatever, it's a huge amount of reading. And then try to read it. It's dense. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> But we're very lucky because we have a um, quick cure for our sickness. One small little pill which we can take and it's in the form of a compass of Zen teaching. So that's what we're going to be um, discussing uh, and asking questions about in the next week. And we're really lucky. Santanim actually has distilled this whole collection of Buddha Sutras down to one small little book, which is very easy to uh, handle. It's so easy that many of us who have done this particular series of lectures year after year, especially in the early years, thought, oh, bah, who, this is boring, especially when somebody like me was giving the introductory talk. It was very tedious in the middle of the summer. and. Uh, but I was lucky enough to sit through about a dozen or so lectures that Sun Tzu gave himself without an introductory talk, and he's in Korean, and he's um, incredibly eloquent, and it made me appreciate this particular teaching um, much more. So I hope that uh, we can all get a real lot out of this whole experience, and I want to thank you all for coming very much, and I want to thank Dave Sun Tzu very much for not only making this book, but again and again and again giving us the opportunity and being there for us to um, go over this material. So, uh, <clears throat> probably no one in this room, uh, certainly not myself, would disagree that uh, life somehow is um, sometimes less than satisfying. or as it's translated in Buddha, Buddhism, life is suffering. Uh, I was just talking with Mutansin tonight, surprised for some reason that I'm often not completely satisfied. And uh, that's our life. We don't get what we want. Um, so often this world is called a suffering ocean in Buddhism. Gohe in Korean, suffering ocean. And how do we get across the suffering ocean? Because no one wants to suffer. Well, we take a ship. And in Buddhism they say you take a ship of wisdom, the banya boat, the wisdom boat. Um, well, we can either take, uh, we can get on this boat, but if we don't know where we're going, um, we're just like a piece of driftwood. And we could end up anywhere, maybe on an iceberg somewhere in the North Atlantic. Um, so we need a compass. We need some kind of navigation. And that's what something has come up with, the compass of Zen teaching. This is a compass or a navigation device to help us find our direction in crossing this ocean of suffering. So <coughs> if, if, if I think everybody probably has a copy. Um, we'll start in. <coughs> and uh, the purpose of Buddhism. Now this if you don't get anything else out of this whole lecture, this is like the kernel or the seed of all Buddhist teaching. Everything in Buddhism boils down to this one thing, two things actually. <clears throat> First, attain enlightenment, then instruct all creatures. So any kind of Buddhism, and Buddhism is an incredibly wide um, religion or philosophy or what have you, practice, there's many, many different things. Everything boils down to this, attain enlightenment and, and instruct all creatures. Well, Buddha, um, as we all know, was searching for a long time and ended up eventually after six years of austerities and hard practice, 
sitting under the Bodhi tree and keeping this question, this don't know mind, what am I, or what is life, or what is death, and one day saw a star in the sky and got enlightenment. Well, after that, he thought, no one, this is too subtle, this is too difficult, no one's going to believe me if I told them about this. So he just ended up sitting under the Bodhi tree for several weeks, actually, um, which is kind of a lesser known part of the history. He just kind of camped out in the Bodhi tree, enjoying himself, perhaps, um, thinking it was useless to try to tell this to anybody, because how could this be expressed in words and speech? Well, finally, one of the gods of the heaven, um, named Brahma, in the Indian pantheon, came down to him and bowed to him and said, please, um, there are actually people in this world who have just a little dust in front of their eyes, not too much dust, and if you tried to teach them, maybe you could take away this dust and they could wake up and attain enlightenment too. So Buddha, Buddha um, said, okay, I will do that, and he thought about it. The two teachers that he had had in his spiritual quest were both dead by that time, so he said he couldn't teach them, but there were these five um, Dharma friends that he had during his hard practice, and he thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if they are interested. So he went to where he knew that they were and started teaching, and they listened to him and became his first disciples. His first monk disciples, actually. According to the story, he met some lay people on the road who saw that he was glowing and obviously had attained something and bowed to him and became his disciples also. Um, so anyway, Buddha attained enlightenment and then began teaching. Um, my own experience is that it's not so cut and dry. And I know a lot of us have often thought, how can I start how can I teach? How can I start teaching if I haven't gotten it myself? If I haven't attained enlightenment yet? Um, people say, well, for, I'll attain enlightenment first and then I'll start teaching. And actually in some traditions, like Japan, um, to name one, the students are not allowed to even open their mouth and speak until 20 years have passed, until they have supposedly got something. But, uh, um, I think it was Wan Hyo, a famous Korean Zen monk who said, uh, or a famous Korean monk uh, about a thousand years ago, who said, wisdom and practice are like two wings of a bird. So you can't have correct practice without some wisdom. You can't have correct wisdom without practice. So they go together. Attaining enlightenment and instructing other people cannot really be separated. They're kind of two wings of a bird or two wheels of a cart. Wan Hill also says that helping oneself and helping other people are like two wheels of a cart. A cart won't go without both wheels. So even in this book, it says, instead of it, it doesn't say first attain enlightenment in the Chinese, it says um, <coughs> Sang the Bodhi, which is above attain Bodhi or enlightenment, and then below Ha, ha Wa Jung saying is below save all beings or teach all beings. So above and below, you cannot really be separated. You can't have below without above. You can't have above without below. So we can't have practice in our own enlightenment without teaching. We can't have teaching without enlightenment. So that's what we're doing here tonight. And we'll be doing this for the next week and probably many, many years to come. Anyway, um, Buddhism is divided up into three parts, as we all know. Uh, what we call Hinayana Buddhism, uh, Mahayana Buddhism, and Zen Buddhism. And uh, depending on the tradition that you're studying, um, they'll divide this up differently. Like the Tibetans divided up Hinayana, Mahayana, and Vajrayana, and throw Zen in with the Mahayana. So, and the Hinayana, they won't even say that, um, say uh, Theravada, that's the only Buddhism, and then Mahayana or Zen is an aberrant form. So it really depends on who you're talking, uh, who you're listening to. Um, you're listening to me tonight, and hopefully they something to me in soon. Um, 
So we're going to say Hinayana Mahayana Zen, and this is really an interesting um, breakdown. Hinayana means small vehicle, little vehicle. Um, Mahayana means great vehicle. So Sansanim often um, uses the analogy of Hinayana Buddhism is like you want to go from Los Angeles to New York, so you get on your bicycle or your scooter or maybe your motorcycle, and you go out 10, and then you just get on 40 and keep going across the country. You can stay on 40 all the way through um, the Texas desert and all the way on. And eventually you'll get <coughs> to the East Coast and you can go up to New York. But the road is very clear. First you go here, then you go there, then you go there. And you're going alone on your bicycle or motorcycle. But Mahayana Buddhism is like taking a bus or a train. Many, many people get on the same vehicle with you, and you're all going together from L.A. to New York. But you go by the same road. First you go out 10 and then get on 40, or maybe you're going to go up to San Francisco and go out 80 or something. But you take a definite road, there's signs along the way, and you go step by step, and eventually you arrive in New York. But Zen is not like that. Um, as Sun Moon is fond of saying, Zen is like... You go to the airport, you get in the airplane, boom, the airplane's in the sky, there's no road, and then five hours later you land in New York. Very quick, and there's no map that you can, there's no road, there's no road signs or anything like that. So that's why Zen is not a very popular uh, practice, because uh, there's not a lot of road signs along the way. Um, this happens to be one road sign that we're using tonight. Um, although, if you practice Zen, you'll find that everything is uh, uh, pulled away from you if you're depending on it. <coughs> so, um, I have my little crib sheet here, and hopefully you won't pull it away. <laughs> uh, so, another way to look at it is Hinayana Buddhism is going... We, we live in a world of form, and Hinayana Buddhism goes from form to emptiness. There's, you know, the famous um, Buddhist teaching of life is suffering. Um, and that's really because this world is impermanent. Everything is changing, 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 changing. But that's form. Form is always changing. So if we attach to form, then we have suffering. So that's Buddha's original teaching. So Hinayana Buddhism goes from form to emptiness. Emptiness being in Hinayana nirvana, uh, attain nirvana. Mahayana goes from emptiness to form. So starting from the point of no I, they don't talk about um, impermanence or suffering or all of the standard Buddhist teachings. You'll remember from what we just chanted tonight, the uh, Heart Sutra, no form, no feeling, no perceptions, no impulses, no consciousness, no um, suffering, no origination, no stopping and no path. It's completely refuting all of the um, codified early Buddhist teachings, saying no, 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 no. So that's starting from emptiness, nothing. And then going to form. Form meaning truth. As something Sanskrit always says, the wall is brown, the floor is brown. We just painted the room. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the wall is actually uh, clay bisque. <laughs> and the trim is pearl something. But anyway, um, form being truth. So um, we call that Anuttara Samya Sambodhi. That's truth or complete world. So Hinayana Buddhism goes to Nirvana or the absolute, not moving, not moving world. Mahayana goes from the absolute or from Nirvana or from emptiness to truth to complete world, to Anuttara Samyasa Bodhi. But Zen doesn't talk about um, form or opposite world, doesn't talk about absolute world, doesn't talk about truth world. Zen points directly to just now, moment world. So somebody asked, um, I think it was Unmun Zen Master, what is Buddha? He said, dry shit on a stick. Somebody asked, Dong San, Zen Master, what is Buddha? He said, three pounds of flax. Just now, just 
what am I doing now? Moment world. So that's actually um, from truth to function, correct function. So that's really what Santanin has been teaching us all these years. Um, another way that I've heard him talk about it, uh, which is really interesting, is uh, imagine a watermelon. And uh, if you ask about a watermelon in Hinayana Buddhism, you would be told that a watermelon starts from this seed, little black seed, that somebody plants in the ground, or maybe it falls in the ground, and then it sprouts, and then a vine appears, and this vine grows, and then some little flowers appear on the vine, and then from the flowers, a fruit starts to grow, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it turns into this big fruit, and then maybe somebody eats it, or it rots, and the seeds go back into the ground, and the whole thing starts over again. So it's around and around and around, and uh, tomorrow we'll talk about uh, Hinayana Buddhism, and uh, Bridget, who will be giving the talk, will go into this thing that they call the 12 links of dependent origination, but this is like a watermelon um, seed, and then the fruit, and then the seed and fruit around and around. So it's really talking about um, time, or something changing over time. Mahayana Buddhism, though, is not about time, it's about space or I said before, form, going to form. So if you're talking about a watermelon, then you say, well, this watermelon has this green skin with kind of bands of dark and light green color around it, and it's either, if you're in the West, it's either this, it looks like this long, um, stretched out big football, and if you're in Korea, it looks more like a tether ball or a, a soccer ball. Um, <clears throat> and then inside it has this, red color if it's ripe, and also these little black seeds, and the watermelon is sweet, and all this explanation about what the form is, what the truth is. But Zen is not like that, and I've always loved to hear Santanin say this. He says, Zen means you take your knife, boom, cut into your mouth. Your experience. What is a watermelon? Boom. Mmm. So, that's really wonderful. Uh, we also talk sometimes about, um, in terms of precepts, um, Hinayana Buddhism, uh, if you're thinking in terms of precepts, which are the rules of conduct in Buddhism, Hinayana Buddhism is concerned about the form of the precepts. So, um, do this, don't do that, um, keep your body this way, and you have to kind of observe things by the letter, um, the rule. Mahayana um, precepts are mind precepts, which means um, your action is not so important as your thinking or your mind, which is very important. So even in Christianity, Jesus talks about this when he says, um, even if you have one lustful thought, you've already committed adultery. Um, so that's pretty um, rarefied, high-class, um, difficult teaching. Um, and that's more Mahayana style. Action is not so important as thinking. But Zen means, Zen precepts are, why do something? Um, action is not important, thinking is not important. Why? Your intention is very important. So why do something? So that's another way of... Uh, Oh, there's a story um, about that, and that's uh, probably one that most people have heard. Two monks were out uh, walking from one temple to another, it may have been a long time ago in China, um, and uh, they came to a, a river, and the flood had swollen the river so that it had overflowed its ford and the ferry couldn't go back and forth, and there was a beautiful woman standing on this side of the river, and she had all these fine silk clothes on, and she was standing there because she couldn't cross this river um, without getting completely wet um, or taking her clothes off or, or something. Uh, so she was just standing there and without thinking, one of the monks um, realized the situation and just probably excused himself. I'm sure he didn't just like, pick her up. But anyway, he carried her across the river and set her down on the other side and they continued walking. Well, the younger monk who had watched this finally, after a couple hours, couldn't contain himself anymore and blurted out, we're monks. We're not supposed to touch women. How could you pick up this? How could you hold this woman? 
And <clears throat> the older monk said, I put the woman down on the other side of the stream. Why are you still carrying her around? So that's a really good example of Hinayana, this younger monk who asked the question, and Mahayana, this older monk. He had completely taken this out of his, off his mind, so he wasn't holding it anymore. But I remember once uh, Sansanin told the story and he said, both are not correct. Um, if he was this older monk, he would have said, is that good or bad? And hit this younger monk even stronger. Um, so that Zen, Zen style is uh, almost giving mind acupuncture to uh, people to take away their attachments or our attachments. And it's never the same. It's never, it's not something you can write down. It, you won't find it in here, although the words are in here. It really, uh, it's really necessary uh, if you need mind acupuncture to find a good mind acupuncturist. And uh, we have one sitting right next to us, fortunately. So <coughs> that's uh, the divisions of Buddhism. And finally, we come to the structure of Buddhism, which um, there's a beautiful little chart here if you have a book on page two. This is really uh, kind of, can be very um, deep and involved and long-winded um, philosophy, philosophical explanation, and I'll just, I'll try to go over it briefly. Um, in Buddhism, we have three treasures three jewels, um, three precious ones, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Um, in the first chant that we did tonight, we um, paid homage to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And uh, so what are these? Well, there are different kinds of three treasures, and the original or um, historical uh, three treasures are the Buddha, who, the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni, who, as I talked about before, got enlightenment under the Bodhi tree and began teaching. This was about 2,500 years ago. Um, and the Dharma was the words that he spoke. And the Sangha were the community of people who listened to his teaching and then practiced it. So that's the original Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Well, um, there's also an existence, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. On our altar here, we have the Buddha, and in <coughs> any temple or in most uh, Zen centers or Buddhist centers all over the world, you'll find a Buddha on the altar or something um, similar or representing the Buddha. So that's the existent Buddha, and then the existent Dharma are these sutras, which I talked about. Um, a copy of the Tibetan sutras are in the Bainaki Rare Book Library, and the Korean sutras are all printed on wood blocks in Payinsa Temple. Um, you can also go to any bookstore or library and buy sutras. Those are the existing sutras. And then the existing sangha is um, none other than, here we are, the sangha. And anybody um, tonight in other Buddhist centers all across Los Angeles or Southern California or all over the country or all over the world or who knows, all over the universe who are somehow trying to understand what's going on, have some question. You can expand this notion of Sangha to include everything. Um, Kong Roshi is very fond of talking about the Maha Sangha, so um, I'll just bring that up and let it be at this point. Um, but there is another kind of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and that is the transcendental Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, the transcendental um, three treasures. and. <coughs> That's on, actually written on a calligraphy that used to be right behind in the back of our Dharma room, but now it's down in this hall here. Um, and it basically says, Buddha is clear and pure mind. Dharma is bright light mind. And Sangha is no hindrance mind. So that is um, the transcendental Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. It's not some tangible thing like the historical Buddha or the Buddha on the altar. It's something that we have to attain and experience inside ourselves. Clear and pure. Bright and light. Or also no hindrance. So, Sansanima always, uh, when he talks about this, finishes it with saying that there's one more 
we treasure, and that is um, when somebody asks Joju Zen Master any kind of question, he would always say, "Go drink tea." So that's the three tri- the triple jewel of Zen. Cut off any kind of thinking, any kind of idea. Drink tea, then your experience. Hmm. Okay, almost there. <coughs> So, um, I don't know if any of you have practiced yoga, but I used to, before I became a Zen student, I was a yoga student, and we had three divisions, or divisions in yoga practice too. One was devotional, and then we had um, intellectual, and then um, uh, there was karma yoga. uh, But it roughly corresponds to this. Um, In Buddhism, the Buddha treasure is the object of faith. The object that we can um, believe in or devote to and it corresponds to um, this inside uh, structure in the human consciousness which is intellect emotion and will human beings have this inside structure too and the Buddha treasure is the emotional side of our consciousness so um, if we cut off our thinking then we can attain this mind where everything is beautiful um, because beauty comes from our emotional consciousness and if we're thinking then we can't perceive true beauty but if we cut off thinking which means samadhi keeping a not moving mind then we attain beauty Uh, the dharma is the, um, the intellectual side or philosophical side and that means um attaining wisdom or truth. Uh, Santanin says, well, wrote here, going from ignorance to enlightenment. So, intellectual, our intellect is very, very important when we're practicing. We have to really use our thinking and understand this world. Everybody has some lingering attachment, something they want. We all have it. I want this or I want that. And it often does not appear for a long time. And if we're practicing and then suddenly this lingering attachment appears, if our intellect is not functioning correctly, we can just follow this desire mind or some kind of feeling. But if our intellect is working correctly, then, oh, that's just my feeling. This world, we can really still perceive what this world is um, in truth, even though we have some desire or some feeling. So, this intellect, correct view, as some people call it, is very important. Um, then, the third part, um, the Sangha, is, corresponds to the will, our will in our consciousness. And so, we talk about precepts, um, it's the ethical side of our nature. And uh, these three things are um, intellect, our emotions, and our will have to be in balance. And practicing, um, I think we've all found, anybody who's done practicing has found that practicing really brings these three things into balance. Um, We have chanting. Every morning and every evening we do the chanting, which really um, helps our emotional consciousness. People get a very good feeling after chanting. Um, We have Kongan practice, which is um, food for our intellect, and then cutting that off. (laughs) <laughs> and we have, we have uh, sitting, which really is um, will, um, and bowing. Um, so our practice is really um, well designed for the different aspects of our consciousness. Anyways, when these things come together, our intellect, emotions, and will, then it means that our faith, our understanding or wisdom and our practice come together and if those three things come together then that's called moksha or uh, moksha is the Sanskrit word for liberation or um, holiness it says here so that is the structure of Buddhism and I thank you all very much for bearing with me um, tonight and now I would like to 
turn um, Fontanine loose on you all. I mean, turn it over to Fontanine. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about tonight or anything at all, actually, I hope that you'll ask him. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much in Guriya listening. Very good Dharma speech. Also very good talk. So also thank you very much everybody coming here listen to the uh, combat of Zen teaching. Uh, that is a very important book. First I came and I stayed many kind of Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism and Hinayana Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, Korean Buddhism, many, many kinds of Buddhism. So they said, oh, my Buddhism is correct. Uh, also, the Japanese Buddhism many separate, you know. They had Yambu, Jenting Buddhism, Sutra Buddhism, also Namaho Renge Kyo Buddhism. Namaho Renge Buddhism is very strong, only Namaho Renge Kyo. Other kind of Buddhism, oh, not, not so good to stay in Tokyo. So, how is that this, uh, you know, many on the Apache Day Buddhism? How is it made clear, you know? So, make this book. Make this book. So, this book is. Uh, Man of the man of the dream, all set. Then, if you uh, understand uh, Kumatan, this book, then understand, ah, my Buddhism is this part, my Buddhism is that part. <laughs> the whole understanding, all kinds of Buddhism. So, we make this. So, today uh, uh, we begin uh, uh, teaching, uh, Kumatan teaching. Uh, First, this um, Mariansen is very good Dharma speech. So, everybody has a question. Uh, three kind today. Today we are three kind of listening. That's what is three kind? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Three kind of yeah. So. so, any kind of question, not only this book, I don't need. Okay. Oh. Um, thank you very much for your talk. It was very nice. Thank you. Um, this uh, people look at this and they um, want to um, say yes. I would like to get rid of my suffering, but I enjoy my children. I enjoy my family. I enjoy. Some things, but I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy this. In this, then, as you talk about it here, mm-hmm. uh, how is correct practice will keep a Teaching. person from you understand? Yeah. yeah. How helpful those people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Together. Together is very important. Somebody don't like, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. Then you say to him, ah, I also don't like this, don't like this, don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're my friend. <laughs> Who to make a friend necessary? Okay. One of my students, he, uh, before, uh, many, I uh, said, yeah, so, you have a student. He become many hippie action, you know. Seven, uh, six years on hippie style. Same as you, okay, long hair, <laughs> broken clothes. So, seven years is coming, going here. Sometimes stay home, sometimes go, yeah, many, you, you know, this uh, 1970, uh, 1965, that time, many hippies in the United States. So, only hippie action. So, his parents, any time she coming back, man, one week not good body, not washing clothes, that's mad. But she don't like with parents don't like him, so that she like that. <laughs> <laughs> then after he uh, practice, 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 practice. 
we understand ah he be only not correct that strong process you get understand ah that's the correct way so no more he be action no more everyday process Then he attain something, attain something. Ah, Buddhist number one, Prachit number one. Then return to home, correct, return to home. You know, help this father, help mother. Then, oh, my son is a little better nowadays. She got a uh, Buddhist and uh, the Zen center, then uh, Prachit is a little better. Then, strong, the, uh idea appear that idea means Buddhism is correct. Then anytime his father may attach the money, attach the pain, attach the talking, talking, talking. I my me my so, then the song of that Father, you're no good, you're too much I my me mind, no good, no good. Then father said Wow! What is no good? I am already uh, almost 50 years old now. I understand everything. What is no good? Always fighting, fighting, fighting. Then one day, his students come in my prayer. I go to there at that time. Uh, then uh, he said, sometimes I have problems. Okay, problem. My my father, wrong I my mind. I am better than you know United States President. I am better than uh, your uh, everybody. Okay. So my idea number one good idea. Also, very attached money, attached to pain. You know. So how I cannot teach him, uh, my father? How I can teach my father? So I said, you know good. Your father, that they knew, then they're angry. Well, my heart is done. Not practicing, I see. They got to the eye, my name, what is better than me? So you, you don't understand Buddhism. You don't understand them. Then you, you think about the Zen Buddhism number one, this time I inside the head. I want to teach my father that night. That night, number one, that night. You must keep this mind. Listen to me. Put it down. Any I mind, any idea, any Buddhism, of completely down. And you must understand what is your father. Your father attached money, attached wine. At the fame, many kind of things are attached. Then, every week, Sunday or holiday, you good wine, okay? Or high cup of cognac. <laughs> <laughs> then take home, give to your father. And your father talk about, right? Now I make up for the vegan, no good, this is no good, this is no good, then, oh, wonderful, that's correct. You are better than vegan, better than oh, somebody, you know. So only up, up, you know. <laughs> you number one. My father number one, this type of speech. Never bad speech. And it's a heaven when you get some money, then give it some money. Please. This is my uh, working, it is have money, I give it to you. Then your father, very happy, ah, my son, wonderful, son, my son. He tried it, you know. Complete, take away I my me. Go home, cleaning house, cleaning her mother, then with the father time, uh, I, I buy some good, this cognac, please take this cognac. Then father, oh, you're crazy? Why bring your cognac? No, I'm not crazy. People are crazy. No, I'm not crazy. You like to say, you know, cognac, so I buy cognac for you. 
Then, oh, wonderful. No, my son, wonderful son. This time I love you. Then, any kind. You are better than vegan, better than somebody, better than this, this, that. Only you are wonderful, wonderful. Then, oh, my son, now you are very good, my son. You know, very hard. Then, any time, correct action from the him. Never talk about it, huh? never talk about that meditation, only help him and help, help. So, mother, very happy, father, also very happy. Then, so, so, my son, very changing his life, very good action. Maybe he, then Buddhism, maybe meditation, then changing mind. Then uh, one day, he, his father asked him, oh, what is the meditation? Oh, no, I not talk about meditation in front of you. You talk meditation, maybe you are get angry to me. No, no, I not angry to you. What is the meditation? Then, slow, slow teaching him. Oh, that's not bad. Then, together 10 minutes, practicing. But then, slow, slow, up, up. Then, finally, now they very good dance student. The father also very good dance student. That's very important. First, to get the action. Very important to get the action. Okay. To get the action, to get the action, to get the action. Then listen to you. Good, bad, but don't check. Good and bad. Okay. Good. <laughs> Try that. <coughs> so, more questions? Any time questions? Let me bring your question. Okay. Uh, what? Uh -huh. What is the difference between uh, Thor and Buddha nature? Huh? What is the difference between Thor and Buddha nature? Uh, or Buddha mind or... Maybe... Uh, Bread, 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 here yeah, bread, it's a food, yeah? Food is bread, bread is food. The, the food is very wide, okay? Buddha is a very wide. But bread is a food kind of food, kind of food, okay? Same as the kind of food. So, you have the Buddha nature and what? So. So. So, okay. So. So, that's the Buddha nature very wide. So means human or some uh, dog or cat as a soul. Okay, so. But tree, rocks, or sky, have no consciousness, but have Buddha nature. Okay? Understand? <laughs> but you don't understand, you don't understand Buddha nature, don't understand soul. Only understanding, only name. Like you. What is the Buddha nature? No, no. Huh? No what? Don't know. Don't know. Okay. What is the soul? Don't know. <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. That's correct. Attain, don't know, then attain your soul, attain Buddha nature, okay? That is very important. That's the only name. Name. So, this name and form. Name and form comes from where? Our thinking. Our thinking, okay, our thinking. If you cut our thinking, then soul and the Buddha nature become one. Uh, then attain Buddha nature, attain your soul. Okay. That's the point. Okay? So, more questions? Okay. Um, <coughs> 
Could you please explain in, in more detail what anyata is? Hmm? What is this anyata? No self? Yes. What is no self? Hmm. But my understanding is that that was one of the one of Buddha's teachings that was quite different from teaching that was that existed before his enlightenment. And I would like you to maybe go in more detail about it. She said, what is no self? Can you explain this? Buddhism teaching. Buddhism teaching means we are talk about that uh, uh, attain our true self. Then wisdom appear. Okay. Too many, too much understand, too much understand, many understanding. Understanding means somebody's idea, not your idea. So you must digest the understanding necessary. So understanding, yeah, sky blue, trees green, dog barking, sugar is sweet, and everything, they are all understanding. Okay? But the sky never say I am blue, tree never say I am green. Only human beings say sky blue, trees green, dog barking, walk, walk, okay? Huh? But the American people say dog barking, walk, walk. Korean people say never talk about walk, walk, dog, dog barking, the Mong Mong. Okay. Go to Poland, then talk about the how how. The how how, walk walk, Mong Mong, which is the correct, correct dog barking? Which one? Then uh, human beings barking, okay. Korean people barking, <laughs> American people barking, <laughs> Poland people barking, not dog barking. <laughs> so, Thing, thing. Humans make something, name and the form. This is a sky, this is a tree, this is a human being, that is that, that is that. Many, name and the form made by thinking. Made by thinking. So, American people say the American idea, any country, they have an idea. Huh. So this idea means from thinking. So thinking means always changing. Not, not stay one way, okay? Not stay. Only changing, 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 changing. So changing means not true. Not changing, changing. Ever is changing. What is not changing? Ever is changing, 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 okay? So everything has name and form. So name and form the changing, 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 changing. Return to emptiness. Name and form from emptiness. So heart structure. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is the form. Hmm. That's also thinking. That's also thinking. The practice, practice. Name and the beyond name and the form. That we say nirvana. Nirvana. Okay. It's attain nirvana. That no attainment is nothing to attain. Then get nirvana. But the heart starts said, Anu attain anuttara sannaka attain. Before no attainment. Then Attain Anuttara Samnak Sambodhi. Then what is Anuttara Samnak Sambodhi? What is the Nirvana? Two. Nirvana here, Anuttara Samnak Sambodhi here. Uh, two. What is the Nirvana? Nirvana is a complete nothing. Anuttara Samnak Sambodhi is the truth. So only, only Nirvana, only state Nirvana. Yeah, everything is no problem. No life, no death, no coming, no going, hard, no hard, no wrong. Very pure. And pure, and uh, you get this, uh, you know, no suffering over there. But there, attack nirvana, then into this uh, emptiness. So, 
Gara Nulbana, Messi. Gara Nulbana. Then attain Anuttara Sanya somebody. That means the truth. When you see, when you hear, when you smell, when you touch, everything is truth. Sky is blue, tree is green, dog barking up, you guys are sweet. And every, what is that truth? There is no subject, no object. Sky and you become one. Tree and you become one. Dog and you become one. Everything become one. That time, that is the truth. Sky is blue, tree is green, dog barking up, you guys are sweet. Everything become one. So you are truth. That name is Anuttara Sannyasam body. Okay? But only Anuttara Sannyasam body is not enough. One more step. How correct function truth make your correct life? That we say, Hatsa said that Gate Gate Tara Gate Parasangate Bodhisattva. That means only do it. Only do it. The only do it we say bodhisattva action. More wide means that the great love, great compassion, great bodhisattva way. That name is Anuttara Sanyasam Bodhi. Ah, not Anuttara. Gate Gate Tara Gate Prasangate Bodhisattva. Correct function. How attain? Use attain. Function attain, make correct life. So in the Bible it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. See, I am the way is way is we say correct way. Complete put it down you and everything become one. That time attain way. Then when you see, when you hear, when you smell, everything is a truth. Then how correct function through help other people. That's correct life. So, I am the way and the truth and the life. In Buddhism, attain universal substance. Attain Dharma. Okay, attain Dharma. Then, attain truth. Truth means when you see, when you hear, everything is truth. Then, attain truth. Then correct the function truth on the help of the people. That's correct life. That name is the Bodhisattva way. Okay? That three kinds. Okay, more question? No? Everybody attain. <laughs> Wonderful. So Buddhism means huh? question? No. No? Oh. Buddha, uh, he had, before he uh, went to the mountain, he had prince. So, any kind of person, he had the power, had good situation, good family, high job, was every person. But, don't understand himself. Also, that time, many kinds of religion of the Thea, India, Brahman religion, okay. But that cannot help him. So he went to the mountain, the mountain on the city of under Bodhi tree. Only six years sitting under the Bodhi tree, six years, the only go straight, don't know. What am I? Don't no. no. That one morning, so star, boom, got enlightenment. That's the reason. Got enlightenment. Attain my true self. Attain my true self. What am I? If I don't understand, what am I? I don't know. So, attain my true self. That's very important. In sutra, many, many talking, many, many, many talking, many sutra appear. All sutra talk about I. What am I? What 
is three. What is correct direction? Talk about that. But if you don't understand your true self, also, if you a little bit understand my true self, but not believe yourself, not believe you are 100%, okay? Yeah, sometimes believe, sometimes not. How many percent believe you? Maybe somebody said 30%, not bad, okay? Maybe 50%, not bad. Maybe somebody say, how many percent believe yourself? The same with it was not bad. Somebody said, believe myself, 99%. Very good, but very dangerous. 99% <laughs> believe yourself, very dangerous. That's 1%. Sometimes it's 1%. All kids are 99%. That's very important. <laughs> So, 100% believe yourself, that's very important. Mm -hmm. So, here's something, something here, something big rocks, big make hole, make hole, big, make roadness, make road. So, but the rocks is hindrance. So, make hole, it's dynamite, dynamite, okay, it's dynamite. Then all rhyme is dynamite, fire rhyme. It's a fire. Burning. Burning. 99% go over there. Stop. Why don't you burn? 99%. 99%. Yeah, go over there. Stop. Now it's a road. 100% then explode and make road is possible. So 99%, 1% is the same. <laughs> but 99%. Much dangerous. I almost Buddha. Almost Buddha. <laughs> I almost got the enlightenment. That's a hell. <laughs> One person, not so much I'm I mean, but 99 percent strong I'm I mean. I all understand. Everything understand. Only one person don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Number one dangerous that time. So our practice strong practicing, practicing is then mind open. <sighs> I am not that sky bro, trees, green, dog, but no. I am the truth. You understand. Do you believe your truth? Of course. How many percent? 99 percent. Then no problem, okay, no problem. But the one percent killed all 99 percent sometimes. <laughs> it's very dangerous. So, complete. 100% attain your to that very important. That's the correct practice. All right. So more questions? No? Okay. Uh, this is almost the same question she asked. One of Buddha's basic teachings is no self or no soul. Same, I think the same meaning, no self, no soul. So the question is, what is soul? I ask you, who is talking to me? Who is talking to me? Who? I have sex. <laughs> <laughs> Not answer, I answer to you. Okay. Who are you? Sitting in front of you. Huh? Sitting in front of you. Same as you. Same as you? What what is the thing? Nothing. You have here. I have no here. What is the thing? <laughs> That's a big mistake. So I hit you thirty times. Okay. Stick at that table. Same or different. I hit you thirty times. Okay. And that's the ball. The monkey. <laughs> well, what is all? Still an answer. I hit you. More question? That, that's Buddha's answer, but that doesn't help these people with his soul. With his soul? Yeah. You only talk to me. With his soul, it's a bad soul. You have no soul, you do not talk to me. 
So your teaching and Buddha's teaching is different. Huh? Buddha said there was no soul, but you say the soul is talking to you. What is it different? Do too much understand, you have problem. Okay? Put it all down. Understanding cannot help you. Okay? So, more questions? Okay. You say enlightenment, attaining enlightenment is like a natural process, some kind of evolution of the soul, and that huh? to get enlightenment is it's a natural, natural process? There's two parts of the question. No, one by one, okay. First part. First question. Enlightenment is like a natural kind of evolution, um, maybe um, another level. You make me uh, very complicated. Yeah. What is the enlightenment? Your first question, what is enlightenment? No, it's enlightenment like. Enlightenment like? <coughs> like is, evolution? Is enlightenment like a natural process or by itself happening in this style? <laughs> you too much understand. <laughs> you ask me what is enlightenment? No, one by one, okay? No, you asked no, him. He said, ask him, what is enlightenment? Oh, what is... I can't ask you. What, what color is <laughs> it? <laughs> can I ask me? That's okay, no problem. Come in here and him. Then you come in here and him. Here's the center, okay? Then attain your two sets. Attain your two sets, that's enlightenment. Okay? And the second question is, okay. um, is the soul an enlightenment, um, something so, um, soul? <laughs> soul like enlightenment or um, realization, is it something so vast that one can never get out of it to make it an object? So it can't ever be perceived that way. I don't know how to... Okay, in other words, <coughs> if it's the source of, of, of this, all of this, then it's what I would call in the um, Christian or Hindu term, the supreme source of subject. So therefore, it can't be an object or else it wouldn't be what it is. Who makes subject object? Who made subject object? Uh, huh? Mind. Yeah, mind? Uh, opposite mind? What, what kind of opposite mind? What is the absolute mind? <laughs> Too much understanding has problem. <laughs> <laughs> Too much read book, so help driver. Uh, complete put it down. Complete put it down. That's all somebody's idea, not your idea. Yeah? Okay? What is your idea? What is your idea? You have your idea, have no idea? I have an idea. Have idea. What kind of idea have? They go from moment to moment, and they change. What does it mean, moment to moment? Just where my attention focuses on, from second to second. Second to second? What is the second second? Just now. Oh, that's an idea too. Huh? But now I'm aware that I'm talking. That's, that's, that's your thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your thinking is not correct idea. So you told me what, what is the correct idea? You ask me. You say moment to moment the correct idea, you know? You say that, moment to moment the co correct idea. Did I say correct? 
So moment to moment is what you say. Is this his idea changing moment to moment different around the room? You asked me for that idea. You explained my understanding with it. You were asking me what ideas are. So that's so you're always changing, changing idea I means not correct idea. Oh, okay. oh, not see. changing idea is the correct idea. Not changing idea is the truth. Not changing idea is the truth. Oh. So you must attain not changing idea. If you have past, present, future, you have past, present, future, you have, do you have? Well, I, I, I see that against something. I, I realize against all the past, present, and future, uh -huh. against, well, that, what is I see that against something that, I, I was taught, I see that against something that doesn't change. <laughs> I ask you, what is the present? What is the present? Here, there. Present is an idea. That's, a, that's a, your idea, okay? Your idea is not correct. Present, not exact. You say present or the testing. Because time is, is non stop. Time is always flowing, okay? Moving, moving. So you say present or the passing? Past and future change. The present is. What is future? My mind thinking about. <laughs> around, 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 around. Okay. <laughs> this sound. This sound comes from where? This sound comes from where? Your ear? This table? This stick? This sound, this sound comes from table? What stick? What air? Your ear? Where? Where it comes from? It comes, the idea is it comes from a um, limitless potential. Complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said they say I this sound comes from table, but the, the table have no have no sound. Well, Maybe it is a this stick makes sound, yeah? This stick makes sound. But if your stick makes sound but it have no air, have no air, then can I make a sound? So maybe the air makes sound, okay? Yes. Listen to me, okay? Then someone think the air makes sound, but have no ear, have no ear, cannot hear sound. So maybe my ear makes sound. Huh? Then somebody think of the ah oh, ear makes sound? Have no consciousness, also no sound, okay? We have consciousness, then ah sound appear, you know, sound. Maybe the conscious make sound. Then conscious, the highest consciousness that we say mind, mind makes sound. So six kinds, six kinds of changing, changing. The sound comes from the yeah, table. The, the con, sound comes from where? Yeah, maybe the stick. The next con, comes from where? Yeah, the air. The next comes from where? Yeah, the ear. Then that comes from consciousness. Next what? Mind. So, six changing, 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 changing. Okay? That's uh, we say thinking. So, this sound comes from where? I act with him. The sound comes from where? Alright. Not changing, changing, changing. Just do it. That explanation. The sound comes from a table and the stack, air, ear, consciousness, mind. Changing, changing. Six steps. Changing, changing. That's a thinking. <coughs> thinking. Yeah. Here, not thinking. Only cut the stick. The sound comes from where? Then he only holding the stick. 
or do it. Explanation not important. So everything explanation is a mistake. It's a thinking, 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 thinking. So correct practicing means cut our thinking, straight, boom, point our mind, get enlightenment. That's the Zen. Okay. Okay, question over. You know, we talk, we communicate when, when we uh, you know, talk to each other. Mm. We exchange the ideas. And uh, without the ideas, we cannot communicate. And indeed, you know, when I listen to you, idea seems to hinder our path to enlightenment. So, in a way, the human uh, being is, uh, in a way, cursed, you know, because we have ideas. Now, what kind of idea do you have? What kind of idea do you have? I am talking about, you know, the, in general, human beings communicate. We, we speak each other. And then without the ideas, we cannot speak. So, uh, why the animals don't seem to, you know, the, uh, you know speak to each other? Does that mean that the animals uh, have, uh, you know, uh, reached the enlightenment? You know, why human beings are so cursed because we have ideas. And we have such a you know, difficulty to reach enlightenment because we have ideas. What kind of, what kind of idea do you have? No, I don't have ideas. You have no idea. I only have <laughs> Then don't talk to me, okay? <laughs> no idea, no problem. You have idea, you have problem, okay? Idea is okay. Idea, idea, have idea, have no idea, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it better that we rather sing and dance instead of uh, talking about? Listen to me. Don't make your idea, okay? <laughs> idea is okay. I have idea, have no idea, doesn't matter. How correct? If we have idea, how correct function your idea? That's very important. Have no idea. How correct function? No idea. That's very important. Uh. I think it's in a way the idea. So you are talking to your idea. I'm, I'm speaking about anybody's idea. Anybody? Yes. Don't talk about anybody. Talk to you. What is your, uh, your idea? Well, I'm talking about my idea as well as the Buddha's idea. Your idea is the Buddha's idea? No. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. Huh? I can deny that either, but uh, you know, what, what I'm talking about is. Uh, I, I ask you, okay, you're, you mean understanding. Who are you? Who are you? I am me. Myself. I am me? <laughs> what is me? Well, I don't ask that question because I don't like to have ideas. That's the Zen talk. We are talk about Zen class, okay? So I feel, what are you? If you don't understand, only don't know. Okay? Don't make your idea. Your idea is not your idea. That's somebody's idea. You, you somebody, know, somebody goes, you go to school, primary, primary school, high school, university, then into, 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 teacher, or somebody's idea. I mean, Not your idea. What is the, your idea? The problem here is that if I say I I don't know who I am, then you 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 tell you tell me that oh you don't know, you don't understand yourself. If I say yes, I know myself, then that's only an idea. But you don't. It's a no it's a no win situation. They cannot win. If he, if he say, I understand myself, you say, no good. If he say, I don't understand myself, then you say, you don't understand yourself. Oh. I have six. <laughs> <laughs> Too much talking, sick walking, okay? <laughs> so very important. That's why I'm laughing. So... Very important, talking, 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 infinity. But 
true idea means without thinking. True idea means without thinking. Without thinking is without speaking. So a long time ago, Rinchi said that any kind of question, only cast. Doctor said that any kind of question, only hit. Good is not any kind of question, only one thing. So, if you attain the standard that hit, good is not one thing, or rich is not a card, then attain a teacher. That's a very important point. So, then is, then is not then. If you want to understand your true self, not depend on word and speech. That is there. So, we are today compassionate talking, talking, talking means many people too much understanding. So, how take away understanding? So, heart sickness, heart medicine necessary, cold sickness, cold medicine necessary. Too much understanding, ah, too much understanding medicine method. So we talk about the compound thing. <laughs> so, talking, talking, then rest. Oh, my understanding is somebody's idea, not my idea. What's my true idea? Don't understand. Yeah. So, Talk about the compass, then today we, are, we begin talking, 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 talking. Then you understanding, you understand, digest, 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 become zero. Then this understanding become wisdom. That's the compass of the teaching. So I hope uh, today uh, everybody is coming here. Thank you very much. So continue. Tomorrow we are continue Hinayana Buddhism. Uh, listen to Dhamma speech means very important this world of many many human beings but this consciousness comes from where okay I in time talk about 1945 two billion people many thousands of years only past to the 50 almost 50 years three billion people up here. boom up here so this consciousness comes from where Human beings are too much cute or animals. They eat meat or something that. So all this consciousness, human being consciousness, face is a human being. But this consciousness, dog, cat, lion, snake, any kind of animal consciousness coming in. So that's a cleaning method. Cleaning, 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 cleaning. Then animal consciousness all take away. 100% of the human consciousness, return to human consciousness. Then we have love, great love, great compassion, great bosat way appear. Then help this world is possible. So that is the Buddha's teaching. So thank you very much today coming here. So coming here tomorrow, same time, we continue Hinayana Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism lecture. So uh, please come. Also today come in here, listen to Damaski. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Nathan Sanin and Marianne Sanin. And thank you all very much for coming. Uh, we have practice every morning at 5.30 and every evening at 7 o'clock. You're welcome to come. And uh, as the team said, our lectures will continue for the next five nights. Uh, we'd like to be able to give you all these books tonight, but unfortunately these are the only copies we have right now, so we have to collect them. We hope later in the program we can give these out. Uh, meanwhile, these uh, talks have been produced through the efforts of many people, and uh, if anyone feels like leaving a donation in the box in the hall, that would be very much appreciated. And now we are going to have some tea downstairs. Please join us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Good talk. Oh, really?